in the next section of the notes, we're gonna talk about the width of parabolas um, and then how you can make a parabola go up or down on a graph. All right, first question is, how can you tell if a quadratic graph is wide or narrow? Now you see how it says a quadratic graph? That's the same thing as a parabola. Now let's talk about how you would make it wide or how you would make it narrow. Let's give ourselves some equations. Let's pretend we have y equals 3x squared. And let's talk about if we have y equals 1 third x squared. Then let's talk about if we have y equals x squared. And then let's talk about if we have y equals negative 3x squared. And then let's finish with y equals negative 1 third x squared. All right, let's start with the most basic one. The most basic parabola is the middle one, y equals x squared. In this problem, a is equal to 1 because there's a 1 in front of the x squared. This is what I would call just a normal shaped parabola. And it would look like this. Let's just kind of eye it up. Give yourself a normal shape u. Let's move to the left and compare that to y equals 3x squared. In this problem, a is 3 because it's the number in front of x squared. What that's going to do is it's going to take your normal graph and it's going to make it very narrow. It's going to grow a lot faster. Now let's compare that with y equals 1 third x. A is 1 third, the number in front of x squared. What that's going to do is it's going to take your normal parabola and it's going to make it very wide. Okay? Now let's go ahead and compare that to y equals negative 3x squared. Well, a is negative 1. So what that's going to, or excuse me, a is negative 3. What that's going to do is it's going to flip your parabola upside down and it's going to make it very narrow. The upside down comes from the negative. The narrow part comes from the 3. The last one, y equals negative 1 third x squared, it's going to flip it upside down and it's going to make it very wide. So when we talk about wide or narrow, okay, anything that has, let's write this up here, any a value, and put a in quotes so you know it's like the actual, I'm talking about a, any a value, um, and let's talk about the absolute value, meaning I don't care what, I, I was, I'm talking about the positive value. I don't care about its negativity. I care about the number itself. Any a value, the absolute value of it, greater than one is very narrow. And that looks kind of funny. That's supposed to say greater than one. Whereas if it was less than one, and again, I'm talking about absolute values, guys, it would be very wide. Let's go ahead and try to apply that in problem three. Use the equations below. What is the order from widest to narrowest of the graphs of the quadratic functions? All right, take a look at them. Remember, I'm not necessarily concerned about the negatives. The only thing a negative will do is flip it upside down. Let's find the narrowest, the skinniest of all. Well, that's the biggest number the four. Okay, so this one is the narrowest. Okay, let's try to find the widest of these three. There's your fraction. This one's going to be the widest. And then the very last one, this is just going to kind of be a regular one. Okay, if you want to see a graph, this one's a negative 4, so it's going to be real skinny and upside down. This one's a 1 fourth, it's going to be real wide and open up. This one's going to be a regular. All right, got it. What is the order from widest to narrowest? Use your calculator this time. 
Let me go grab a calculator. And when you come in tomorrow, I want you to practice this. Grab your calculator and hit the Y equals button. Type in the first equation, negative x squared. Go down, type in the second equation, 3x squared. Go down, type in the last equation, negative 1 third x squared. Now, when it graphs, it's going to graph number 1 first, then it will graph number 2, and then it will graph the third. Here I go, I'm going to hit graph. Ready? Oh, let me hit zoom 6, and that will, give it a second, I'm going to hit zoom 6 so it looks better for you. Okay, you ready? Zoom, six. There's the first one, pretty normal. There's the second one, a little more narrow. The third one is really wide. So this one says, in this problem, what's the widest? This would be first for the widest. Okay, that's the widest. And then, which one was next? Which one's more wide? Then this one would be second wide. This one was the third widest. Okay, this one was real big upside down. This one was real skinny right side up. And this one was pretty normal upside down. Now, the next thing talks about how to move things up and down in a graph. Well, let's start with the most basic, y equals x squared. We call that the parent function. Let's practice moving it up. If you do y equals x squared plus one, that moves it. Let's write the real word, translated. That's what moved means. Translated up one. That's not bad, is it? Just the plus one. So if you have y equals x squared plus five, that one's just gonna be translated up five. Now you wanna translate it down. Guess all you have to do? Instead of adding, subtract. So y equals x squared minus one would translate it down one. And if you had like y equals x squared minus five, that's gonna translate it down five. And that's pretty much what this little sentence says. How is the graph of y equals 2x squared plus 3 different from the graph of y equals 2x squared? Well, notice the only thing they did was they added that 3 in there. Well, if you add the 3, is that going to shift it up or down or left or right? Well, we already talked about it just being up and down, so let's get rid of options C and D. And since it's a plus 3, that means it's going up 3 units. Problem four, how are these graphs related? Well, if this one's the normal one, this one is what we call translated down three units. In the next section, you're gonna learn a little physics. And physics is a really cool topic that deals a lot with parabolas. It says, as an object falls, any object, a bowling ball, a marble, a penny, it continues to increase its speed. So, you, so the height above the ground, it decreases at a faster and a faster and a faster rate as it falls. Like if you jump out of an airplane, you're gonna start kind of slow, but then you're gonna pick up and you're gonna get faster and faster and faster as faster as you fall. Um, now that's because of gravity. Ignoring air resistance, like so pretend that it, you didn't have any air resistance affecting you can model the object's height with this function. And this is always true. The height h is in feet and the time t is in seconds. And the object's initial height is c in feet. Okay? This is pretty cool. Um, let's talk about let's talk about just our own little example. Let's say that you want you can make your own little equation here. Okay? Let's say that you did h equals negative 16 t squared plus I don't know, 55. Well, what that means is that you started, this is where you dropped it at, okay? You dropped it at 55 feet in the air, 
And let's say you want to figure out where it's going to be in like three seconds. Let's plug in three seconds. Watch how neat this is. So you want to know the height if you drop something at 55 feet. And you want to figure out where's it going to be in three seconds. Well, let's figure it out. You do negative 16. And then you put in parentheses 3 squared. There we go, 3 squared, almost. Negative 16, 3 squared, there we go. Plus a 55 from me dropped it. Well, in 3 seconds, it's going to be at negative 139 feet. What that means is it won't even, it will take less than 3 seconds, okay? But what we can do is see how you can plug in any time. So negative 139 doesn't probably make a lot of sense to us. That's because by the time 3, three seconds has occurred, it's already going to have hit the ground. So this one we're going to say, it already hit the ground. But you could plug in any time and figure it out. Kind of a neat thing. All right, now in problem number five, we're going to graph this kind of a situation. An acorn drops from a tree branch 20 feet above the ground. The function h equals negative 16 t squared plus 20 gives the height of the acorn in feet after t seconds. What is the graph? About what time does it hit the ground? Let's make an xy chart, but instead of x and y, this time we're going to make a th chart, time and height. Well, let's start with, we're not going to go back in time, so let's start at time equals 0. So you're going to plug in negative 16, 0 squared plus 20, and I hope you guys know that's going to be 20 feet. Well, that's because when time started, we started at 20 feet. Let's take a look and let's go in half. Let's go actually, let's not go in full second intervals because this thing is dropping real fast. Let's go by point 0.2. Let's plug in point 0.2. So you do negative 16 times point 0.2 squared plus 20. Well, if you plug point 0.2 in, you're going to realize after point 0.2 seconds, that's really fast, point 0.2 seconds, that object or that acorn is going to be at 19. 36 feet. So it's dropping. Let's go another 0.2 seconds. Okay, so we're going to plug in 0.4 squared and then plus 20 this time. Plug it into your calculator, square it, then multiply, then add. You're going to see this thing's dropping even faster now because now it's all the way down to 17.4 feet. Let's keep going and see how fast this thing keeps dropping. So let's try 0.6 now. Plug it in, get it in your calculator. That's going to end up being at 14 feet. So it's dropping. It's dropping fast. Notice how it's increasing more and more each time. Let's plug in 0.8. Oops. I wrote down the answer instead of. So negative 16 times 0.8 squared plus 20. Pause the video if you need to copy this down. Okay, now it's going to be all the way down at 9.76 feet. Let's go to a whole second. Negative 16, 1 squared. Shouldn't need a calculator for this one. Okay, it's going to be at 4 feet. Keep going, guys. Keep plugging it in until you reach 0 feet, because when you reach 0 feet, it's hit the ground. Okay, I'll show you this one, what it looks like when you plug it in. I think you guys know, but let's make sure. Negative 16, 1.2 squared plus 20. All right, notice on this one, it reaches a negative. All I want you to write here is negative. It's a negative answer. Let's go ahead and graph these points. I would like to count up on, let's count up by twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Now remember, this is the y-axis, and our problem is the height. Okay. <coughs> and then down here, this is the x-axis, so then our problem is time in seconds. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go by point twos since that's what I skipped by on my chart. And you should go by point twos too because it looks nice. So 
So at zero, I'm at 20. Put a dot there. I'll make them colored so you can kind of see the difference here. Zero is at 20. Point two is up 1936. So that's pretty gosh darn close to right around here. Point four, it's at 17.4. So here's like 17.4. At point six, it's at 14.2. At point eight, it's at like 9.7, or 9.8 really. Pretty close to 10 there. Notice how these, these dots are getting more and more separated as we move along. At one, it's all the way down here at four. Look at that big jump. And then all we know is that it drops down. Here goes the acorn. Okay, and we know that it has to hit between one second and 1.2 seconds because that's where it reaches zero on the graph. So it says about what time, we're gonna say this, between one second and 1.2 seconds. All right, you guys will learn how to solve it and be absolutely exact, but right now that's not something that we need to concern ourselves with. You've got one more to do, okay? And instead of the acorn dropping at 20 feet, now the acorn is dropping at 70 feet. So it's up higher, so it's gonna take longer. Well, let's make a um, TH chart instead of an XY. Let's start at time equals zero. Now, if you plug in time equals zero, you better get out 70, okay? Because zero times anything and then add 70. Now, since we dropped it from a higher height, higher height, yeah. Let's skip by point fives here on our way down, okay? Let's see what happens once we get to um, maybe 2.5. Let's plug all those numbers in. If you plug in point five, point five, you'll get negative 16 times 0.5 quantity squared plus 70, and plug that in your calculator, you will get out 66. Continue plugging these numbers in, making sure you know how to do that. And one is gonna give you 54. 1.5 is gonna give you 34. Two is gonna give you six. And 2.5 is gonna give you a big negative number. Let's graph. Um, I'm gonna count by tens this time since it's so high. Okay, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Remember, this side is the height in feet. This is our time in seconds. And I'm going to make it nice and pretty and count by 0.5. I'm not going to go any higher than 2.5 because it gets negative then. That means it's hit the ground. And I'm going to plot my points. Again, pause the video if you need some extra time to plot your points. 0, 70. 0 0.566, 1.154, 1.534, that was a big drop, 2.6, and then all we know is that it, it, it went past, the, it hit the ground at some point in time. So here's the acorn following, falling, and the question is about what time does it hit? We're going to say between two seconds and 2.5 seconds. Now look at part B. What are reasonable domain and ranges for the above function? Hmm. Let's use this guide up here to talk about domains. Now in this problem, instead of our domains being x's, it's in time, okay? So our domain is time now. And our range is, instead of being y, is height. Let's talk about the domain. Well, when does time start? Time starts at zero, doesn't it? Now, our acorn's falling, it's falling, it's falling. How long does it take to fall? Well, why don't we say from zero to, since we know it crosses between two and 2.5, let's say two-ish, all right? But the main idea is that it doesn't go on forever. It's not negative infinity to infinity because 
it has a starting time and an ending time. Now let's talk about the ranges. We know this. What's the lowest range when it hits the ground at zero? What's the highest range? Well, when it starts at 70 in the tree. All right, I hope you had fun. And that's just the lesson check. If you have any questions, if you want to solve these, go ahead and do that. Um, and then if you have any more questions, just let me know.